Okay, go for it. Oh, wait. Watch. Start. Okay, good. All right, I'll get out of the way. Hi, my name is Paul Robichaud. I'm one of the co-founders of MD Portal. I want to talk about Max. He's got a pretty terrible rash. He woke up at 6 a.m. this morning with it. It burns. He wants to get it taken care of today. <laughs> he wants to get it taken care of today, and he wants to see his doctor. But he's in luck because he knows about telemedicine, like a lot of people here do. You can see your doctor over live video chat. So Max waits two and a half hours until his doctor's office opens. He calls and he tries to schedule a live video chat with his doctor at 10 a.m. when he has a break in his day. But that doesn't work for his doctor. You know why? Because she's busy seeing patients at 10 a.m. And this scheduling headache can go back and forth and back and forth, and it might be several days until Max finally gets an appointment with his doctor. So what's the use of telemedicine if you still can't see your doctor? So let me introduce you to the solution. MD Portal is an asynchronous telemedicine platform. Unlike live video, it works kind of like secure email or text. So there's no live interaction. So let's take care of Max's rash using MD Portal. Instead of waiting two and a half hours, he goes directly to his doctor's website. He logs on to MD Portal. He answers a few questions. He snaps a photo and submits it. MD Portal immediately notifies his doctor that a new visit's available. And before she even starts her busy day, she logs on to MD Portal, reviews his information, and then quickly sends him a treatment plan for poison ivy and prescription to are delivered to the pharmacy right down the road from him. That's it. With MD Portal, a doctor can now treat or triage you in as little as two minutes. Our focus is driving efficiency while still enabling your doctor to deliver high, high quality health care. That means that a doctor can see about eight telemedicine appointments on our platform in the same amount of time that it takes them to see you in person or over live video. We're first starting in dermatology because the value proposition is the most compelling there. So about 30% of a doctor's visits are simple follow-up visits or checkup visits, and it pays them about $75. But dermatologists also see lots of cosmetic or surgical patients, and it pays them between $400 to $2,000 per patient. So by moving those more routine visits onto our platform, it makes time for higher paying patients that actually need to be seen in, pers uh, in person. It could be those cancer patients. It could be also those cosmetic patients. By doing this, a doctor can make an additional $100,000 a year by you, just by using our platform. We're just starting in dermatology, but it represents a much larger opportunity. We'll use our presence there to go into health systems as well as into primary care and then from there on to surgery and to other specialties. So we're different from our competition because we are an asynchronous telemedicine platform. Because, it take, because your doctor can see you much faster, it's, it's more convenient for your patients. In live video, it might be convenient for the patient, but it's not convenient for your doctor, which is why they don't do telemedicine. MD Portal is the only platform that's convenient for both, your pa both the patient and the doctor. We have a sales strategy so that we can achieve scale in a fragmented market. We're first going to start with inside sales going directly after small private practice dermatology clinics. And then working in parallel, we'll develop relationships with pharmaceutical and device companies so that we can leverage distribution networks that they've already created. Uh, over the past two and a half months, we've doubled our customer base. We're now operating in six states, and we've had about 100 visits scheduled on our platform over the past three months. Uh, we have a great team. I've done telemedicine at, uh, we have a great team, I'm up there. Uh, uh, I've done telemedicine at large health systems, consulting with them. We have a chief medical officer who graduated from Harvard Medical School. She trained underneath the current president-elect of the American Academy of Dermatology and has deep connections in the dermatology space. And we have a CTO that's a successful entre entrepreneur who has 15 years of high-tech experience. We're looking to fill uh, the team with additional sales so that we can execute on our sales plan and add to our engineering team so that we can continue to deliver a differentiated product to the marketplace. So, if you have a terrible rash, <laughs> you should go see your doctor. If you know a dermatologist, come talk to me afterwards. <laughs> I'd like to talk with you. Thanks so much.
Back in the back. In the back. Do we have uh, approval? Do we have insurance coverage? So it depends on the state um, because insurance coverage is state by state. It's not yet covered by Medicaid uh, in Texas. It is covered. There's some spotty coverage for Medicaid in the states, in California, in Ohio, North Carolina, Minnesota. There's not coverage for Medicare, and there's some individual coverage for private insurers in different states. So th the answer is it, it depends on which state, really. Um, the one thing I can tell you is that that is accelerating and changing uh, in the same ways that live video is is mostly reimbursed in all 50 states depending on the model we're seeing traction and uh, increase in reimbursement in this space as well so we have to be HIPAA compliant we store and transmit uh, patient information <laughs> health insurance portability and accountability health information so essentially we have to we have higher standards because we store patient information so there are certain encryption standards and certain protocols and procedures that we have to have in place we have a HIPAA compliant meaning we can store patient information uh, cloud infrastructure that we pay a hefty monthly fee to store that information in. Does that answer the question? Okay. Great question. A, a, a what? A wood? All right. So is that, there's also a dermatoscope, which is polarized light they use to look at pigmented lesions. So the, the answer is that for pigmented lesions, the way it would be handled is um, it would be used as more of a triage tool. So dermatologists would never diagnose uh, a lesion, basically a mole making sure it's cancer is not cancerous. They would basically be using it as a triage tool to say whether or not I need to see you tomorrow or it's safe enough to see you for two weeks. And in those cases, it's, it's very, it's within the you know, acceptable parameters to use it for that. A very quick notification that the doctor will see them in three months. So it won't be it won't be three months, right? So they have special spots for they do right. So if it's if it's just through a telephone call where they don't have a good uh, read on it, right? It can be three months. But if it is something that they can tell that it's more severe, they have spots where they fit people in for things like that. And because they know it's super severe and it, it's most definitely cancerous, they'll fit them in at a sooner a sooner spot because they'll they'll have that knowledge. They can more efficiently triage those patients instead of letting them all in, basically. Yes? I did forget that. Thank you. Uh, we charge a one-time implementation fee for customization because we put in their own branding. We configure the assessments to whatever their preferences are, and then we charge a monthly fee. So right now the price point is $2,500 for an implementation fee and then uh, $250 per month per provider. And they set the price for their patients and everything. Yes? men uh, because you get to see your own doctor and we are specialists so right now it's in dermatology so you, you actually see the doctor that you go to your annual skin check for it's your doctor that you see we So only, uh, good point, I only explained one model of care. So we actually support, uh, depending on the different laws in every state and what the patient, whatever the doctor's preferences are, we can handle scheduled follow-ups for an existing condition. We can do new patient visits with an established patient or even a new patient visit with someone they've never even seen before. And it just depends on the doctor and the state in which we are. We have different models in different states. So in the middle. In, in terms of what? So a little bit. Um, 
you know, we, we traditionally have left it up to the doctors to, you know, that they're their patient, it's their brand. So, but we've actually started to build in reminders so that we can help that out. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Mike. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay.